Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Emily Addis. This video is going to be the first of a series of calisthenics videos so you can follow along with me in my journey. To give you an idea of where I'm starting, I'm an experienced weightlifting athlete. So I've been doing certain calisthenics moves like pull-ups and dips and push-ups for a while now. But I've decided to switch from focusing on hypertrophy training, which is growing my muscle mass so I can have big muscles. Uh, I've switched from that to focusing on more strength training, which is different. The strength training, which is literally how heavy of an object can I pick up once. So season number one of this training is gonna have a breakdown of strength movements, calisthenics movements with weights added on if they're too light, some dynamic power movements, and then a little bit of flexibility sprinkled in there. Unpopular opinion, I love flexibility. Most people hate it. So the past four or five years minimum of weightlifting has been focused on growing muscle mass because A, it looks good, so aesthetic, and B, mostly for the metabolism because who doesn't want to eat more food? Let's be real here. But since starting strength training about two years ago, I've realized how empowering it is to actually feel stronger. But I haven't really focused in and zoned in and focused for a long period of time on strength training. So I haven't seen a huge amount of growth for strength, which is understandable because I haven't been focusing on it, but I'm gonna focus on it now. So I'll be setting aside the next few months, two years, who knows, we'll see, but minimum a few months for just strength and just calisthenics training. I said I'll have that dynamic movement in there so I can stay agile, be able to do cool mobility workouts and stuff. I'm not boxing down what I can't do, but I am focusing on what I am doing, which is strength and calisthenics. And I'm training, and I'm being super transparent that I'm training to do this because I want to do really cool handstand tricks and I want to do a front lever. Just putting it out there. For people who aren't familiar, a front lever is more of an advanced skill and I'm more of a beginner, so I've got a few steps to go. <laughs> but I'm gonna be filming my workouts and sharing my journey as I go, so don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos and to follow along with my journey. So without further ado, here is an upper body calisthenics and strength workout and day number one of my calisthenics journey. So today's workout was a full body strength and calisthenics workout. It was eight total exercises. I always do a warm up before my workouts, usually five to 10 minutes long or so. I wanna make sure that my full body and especially the muscle areas that I'm going to be working out during the session are nicely warmed up and won't be injured because I've been there before and it's really not fun. So you can see I started with some jumping jacks and then I went into dynamic stretching to warm up my lower body and full body here. I don't prefer static stretching at the beginning of the workout. If I use more dynamic movements, then I feel like it still wakes up my uh, my muscles and gets them flexible and ready to go. So since today is heavily upper body focused for the calisthenics, I'm gonna put a lot of emphasis in warming up my wrists and shoulders and arms, elbows, overall upper body. So I started with wrist circles, then I did elbow circles, and now I'm warming up the shoulders. These two exercises are particularly awesome because they help warm up your wrists, and I think that they are probably the reason that my handstands um, haven't injured my wrists at this point because I do a really thorough wrist warm up. Last, I'm gonna do some scapular protractions, which is when you push your, sh your scapulas, the, the shoulder bones, away from each other. Um, so I started on my knees and now I'm on my feet here and um, that increases the difficulty. Just a bit of a warm up to engage them. So getting into my first exercise, starting with the front lever tuck. To get into this position, I pull all the way up and squeeze my shoulders and scapulas together and then slowly release myself down until I'm as parallel to the floor as I can. The closer that you bring your knees to your chest, the easier this exercise is. If you're a complete beginner, start by just hanging from the bars and getting your knees as close um, to your body as you can. Exercise number two is a planche tuck, which is more challenging, but if you add in the parallettes, like I'm going to in a second, um, it's a much more beginner friendly exercise. This is a one day progression to the planche and you want your hands to face away from each other here and squeeze those shoulders to protract them away from each other. So here's the slightly easier version with the parallel bars um, and you're holding yourself in a ball here 
And the whole goal of this progression here is to get comfortable squeezing those shoulders away from each other as much as you possibly can. I was trying to make my back more parallel to the floor, but at this point when my uh, when I just couldn't hold it, I moved so that I was still squeezing those shoulders away from each other, but more perpendicular to the floor, and that's fine. What I'm doing here is a progression that I want to work on. It's going from an L sit, still squeezing those shoulders away from each other, into theoretically a planche hold, but obviously not quite because my form. In this workout, I alternated between the front tuck, that first exercise that I showed, and the planche tuck hold. And I would recommend that you try to hold each of these for as long as you can. Maybe it's a few seconds, maybe it's like 15 seconds, maybe it's longer, and then rest for one to two minutes in between each set based on how tired you're feeling. And do three to four sets of each exercise. I would say that if you can hold each any of these exercises for 30 seconds or more, try to increase it to a more challenging progression. So something that's higher intensity, but you can't hold for as long because that's going to help you really build the strength. Awesome. Third exercise is deadlift strength. It's been a few weeks since I've deadlifted, but I did five reps at a weight that I could use good format. Don't compromise your form if you're new to deadlifting. Start really light until you have that form down. It's fine, don't increase the weight until you have that good form because you wanna protect your spine because our long-term health is really the most important and that's one of the reasons that we're strength training. So try to stick to five reps of these if you're new and do three total sets. The fourth exercise is gonna be pull-ups, a classic. I did four to five reps for each of the sets and I did three total sets. So for exercises that are pretty intense, I tend to have a longer rest period. So on string days, I'll have maybe two minutes, one to two minutes, depending on what I need. But if I give myself enough rest so that I've basically forgotten how rough the first set that I just did was, then I'm able to actually really go hard and have that high intensity for my next set. And I added weight because I've been doing pull-ups a while, so I needed to increase the intensity to make them strength exercises in that three to five rep range. Um, but don't worry if you're not at this level yet, I'm gonna make a pull-up progression video in the near future, but you can use bands or your own body weight, but whatever you do, just try to stick between that three to five rep range. If we're going higher than that, it becomes less of a strength movement. So for these exercises, I added 25 pounds, which is not a PR for me, but it is pretty good and a good place for me to start. And we'll see how I'm doing in about a month or a few months, track the progress. By the way, in case you didn't know this, um, when it's a pull up, your hands are facing away from each other. If your hands are facing towards each other, which is usually slightly easier for people depending on what they've been training, but beginners tend to find pull, up, uh, pull ups a little harder than chin ups. Chin ups are when your hands are facing towards you on the bar. So this is a pull up here because my hands are away. Also, that was really bad form. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> Okay, so next exercise is going to be dips. For this one, I switched it up and went for eight reps for three sets total. And this first round, I didn't add weight, but the next two rounds, I added 10 pounds. If you're not at the body weight level dip yet, don't worry. What I used to get to my body weight dip after a few years was the dip assisting machine, which lets you add as much weight assist as you need. Or if you have long resistance bands for pull-ups or a different calisthenics movement, I would recommend trying those out too because you can loop each end across the bar and then they'll be spread through the bars and you can put your knees on the band to assist. So dips really focus on building that tricep strength, which is really important in almost all of the calisthenics moves that you can really think of, like the front lever, the planche, um, really any, the, the handstand. So dips are a fundamental essential in my, in my workout plans. Also, I hope you have good music and you're, you're hydrating throughout this. I was a sweaty mess, a happy sweaty mess. After dips, we have three more exercises, which are going to be the pike push-ups, the pseudo push-ups and leg lifts, and then we will be done for the session. So next exercise is going to be shoulder pike push-ups, and these are really good for building up shoulder strength to do cool moves like handstands. Do six reps for three total sets, and when you move your feet farther away from your hands, it makes the push-up, the shoulder push-up easier. So um, if your hand, it's too easy, then move those feet closer to your hands. 
And just a note on form, make sure you bend at the elbows so your triceps go forward past the elbow line. Otherwise, you're not targeting the shoulders as much. Okay, next exercise is going to be pseudo push-ups. We're going to do eight total reps for three sets. And my form wasn't awesome here. Um, you wanna have your back a little bit less arched. Pseudo push-ups are a more advanced version of the normal push-up. Um, so stick with what challenges you if the normal push-up is good. Stick with that, totally fine. Um, if that's a little easy, you can do the pseudo push-up, which is when you move your hands closer to your waist with your fingers facing away from the body. And the last exercise is leg lifts. So I did 10 reps for two sets and you can use knee raises as a great progression like I do at the end here. Um, just try to get your knees as close to your chest as you can without swinging your body because when you add that momentum, it makes the exercise easier and we want to practice and develop full muscle control in all of these exercises. So it's the combination of the hanging and leg lifting core movement that is going to be really awesome so you can see here that i'm i'm lifting my knees and this would be the progression or just hanging from the bar if that's the level you're at totally fine i didn't film it but i did stretch at the end so don't forget to do that too i hope you enjoyed that video guys thanks for watching everyone leave a like if you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video bye